Well, welcome to another um, Mark Carvel Art YouTube tutorial video. Glad that you can uh, tune in and join me with this. Uh, we're going to start a brand new painting today, so let me kind of explain to you what I got going on here. So I've got a 16 by 20 inch MDF wood panel, and I've gone, come through here now, and I've just kind of laid in uh, a little bit of airbrush in the background. Um, so I, I kind of created a blue sky, a little bit of some cloud formations, and then down here at the bottom, I've got some, some dust that's just getting kicked up. And what I've done is I've come through here and I've drawn in three stallions. Uh, so the idea is going to be that uh, they're going to be running uh, through a, a dusty field and they're just kicking up billows of dust. And so I wanted to get that all laid in and very hazy. I didn't want to have a lot of, of detail here in the background. So um, I, I wanted to get that really nice and sort of soft and fuzzy. And same here on the foreground here with the dust. And then I've just come through here and just kind of hand drawn in our, our horses. Again, I don't put a lot of detail in these things. It's really more just a silhouette with some primary lines. And I used to use this as a roadmap. It's just a guide for me. And as you know, those who've, who've uh, tuned in in previous videos know that um, I, I never like to put a lot of detail in these drawings. Uh, they just get covered up is my theory. And so the detail will all come as I apply the paint. Now, what I want to do here is I want to draw these or paint these in in acrylic. I like to start with acrylic. And then at the end, um, I like to lay in some of the primary detail in oil. Um, so that's uh, likely what we're going to do here with this particular painting. So um, I think I've said enough. Uh, I want to go ahead and get started on this video, so uh, let's go ahead and, and jump into this. So right now I'm just starting with a nice light um, umber color here. I'm kind of just wanting to bring in a little bit of separation between the ground and some of this dust and uh, I've switched over now and kind of lightened that up, added a little bit of white and kind of wanted to start to begin to form some some basic um, little, little rocks and little pebbles, um, some dust and debris that's kind of getting churned up here. So I'm using my my small um, my small round brush for this, and and then coming back with a little bit uh, of highlight on top of that. Kind of work this into the ground a little bit, and again we just want to kind of establish this real quick and. Um, and then we can move kind of more into the uh, into the region working on these horses. But it's important to get this captured early on and kind of work into the dust region as well. I'm using my, my little toothbrush here and I've added a little bit of color um, and just kind of trying to speckle on a little bit of, uh, of more little rocks and, and pebbles. So it's a nice little technique that uh, you can apply this really quickly and get some nice fine uh, dusting uh, of rocks and pebbles. So kind of coming back and adding some highlight here. I'm using some pure titanium white and uh, adding it on the left side. The left will be the light source. And we want to keep that in mind as we continue to work into the painting so that everything kind of ties together. Okay. 
All right, so the next thing that we kind of want to work on is blocking in our two distant horses here. Um, we're going to go for kind of a, a chocolate horse, a white horse, and kind of a, I don't know, a reddish color horse on here. So we'll have three different color horses. Um, so we'll go with our acrylic, we'll block in our horse, uh, starting with the one on the left, and um, what I'll probably do is just uh, work him um, close to completion, and, um, and we'll do him in acrylic um, as far as we can with, with acrylic, and then we'll come back um, with, with oil on top of, of him. So I think that's where we'll get started here, is blocking him in real quick with our acrylic. Now I'm using my um, my dagger brush. This is a really great brush. It has a lot of a nice fine point at the end, but it also you can also load quite a bit of uh, of paint onto the brush, and uh, and it really spreads well and goes a long way. So um, I find that this type of brush does a really excellent job when it comes to uh, creating fine lines and, and detail work. And when you're blocking in animals, um, it's good to kind of slow down a little bit and try to take your time. Um, that way you can get the silhouette exactly as you want it. Um, a word of advice is when you're painting most objects, especially humans or animals, um, they could have a tendency as you block it in that they could swell a little bit, um, especially if you're working really furry creatures, um, and you add, later on you add a lot of the um, a lot of the fur detail that they could cause the object to swell a little larger. So sometimes it's good to to block in your subject maybe slightly smaller, specifically if you're working something that has a lot of hair or fur. So we're just continuing here just to kind of block everything in. And uh, I've just mixed here uh, kind of a pale white. I've added uh, a little bit of umber uh, to that white Everything in the in the block in phase, of course, is going to be going to be darker, um, and then of course you can bring in those those highlights later. So just kind of squaring this up a little bit now, and uh, you know, adding some minor detail. I'll add just um, just some highlights, just some very minor highlights uh, in acrylic. And again, all this will be blocked in an acrylic and we'll be using our oils later. The oils, uh, the oil phase will be where we really add a lot of the, um, a lot of the detail and, um, and some nice color and vibrancy. Okay, we're gonna move over here now to the other horse, and um, this horse is gonna be a little, a little redder, a little blonder, um, and um, so right now I'm just adding kind of the shadow. Right? We have a shadow cast from the front horse uh, that is hitting the the back horse here. And I first like to block everything in, and then of course I'll come back with my charcoal pencil and I'll redraw in the the guidelines I'm going to need when I uh, do the separation throughout the uh, the horses and kind of add some of their muscularity. So 
And I can just redraw those in a little bit later. I've kind of used a bit of a yellow ochre um, and a little purple here to kind of achieve this darker ochre color, um, which will, you know, obviously will serve as um, a lot of the shadow region, darker region of the of the horse. So the block in phase certainly can take some time and um, it's just good again just to slow down and, and, and get get the right angles that you're you're looking for. And since I've already painted in the background, um, I do go through a second time and kind of add another coat of paint. That way I've got nothing showing through from the background. We just good just to start here on the furthest horses. Um, they'll be tucked in back a little bit further. They'll be not an enormous amount of detail like we'll put on the front horse, but just enough. Okay, so we'll stop at this point of the video and kind of explain it a little bit about what I've got so far and what I've done. So I've gone ahead and blocked in my horses uh, totally in acrylic um, and of course I had to take great care to do that. It's not something you just want to get loose and free on. Um, I was using my trusty dagger brush. This is a really great brush. I've got several um, several sizes of this particular brush but it's got such great angles it can be used uh, to make fine lines it can be used to make thick strokes and it holds a lot of paint so these are really great brushes to use for these types of details and of course it does take some time i had to go a couple coats over because i'm trying to cover up um, all this airbrush work that i did in the background so um, it will take a little bit of patience and time to do that um, at this point um, we're going to leave this horse alone. He's going to be more in the foreground. Um, and these guys back here are going to be a little bit more in the distance, of course. And we're going to want to kick up some, some dust um, around their feet. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go back now with uh, our little white charcoal pencil. And I'm going to come through and I'm going to outline all the areas that will help me to separate out the horse's face, um, his, anatom his anatomy, kind of the muscularity throughout the, the neck and into the hindquarters. Um, so I'm gonna go through now and on both horses and use my pencil and kind of help me once again create a roadmap that I'll be able to then follow along uh, as we continue to progress with this painting. I think the idea I have in mind is I'm going to continue to work these horses in acrylic, um, specifically down in this region here. And the reason I say that, probably up here in the head, in the upper back, I'll probably eventually switch to my oils. But in the meantime, I want to, once again, lay in as much as I can uh, here at the bottom portion of the of the horses so that I can come back with my my uh, my um my my air gun and um kind of spray in again a little bit more dust and particles here at the base you don't want to do that because i'm using acrylic with my gun um and i, I don't even possess an oil air gun 
but I do have a, an acrylic air gun. So I do not want to lay oil down and then try to put acrylic on top of that. That just will not uh, bind over time. That'll start to flake off. So it's good to get all that laid in first and then I can go back with my oils at the end and kind of touch it up. So that's what we're going to do on these two horses right now, moving forward, and we'll take the video to that point. All right, so as you can see, I've come in here now and I've outlined some of the separation uh, in the horses uh, so I can kind of see where the legs are, kind of where the uh, the chest and muscularity is and I've done the same over on our other horse here too and so this will act as a nice guide for me so from this point on we're going to come back now I'm going to add some more add some more um, acrylic and kind of kind of start to add a little more highlight with our acrylic at this point we'll start with this horse here and uh, once I get that kind of put in um, and especially kind of, uh, we're going to have the dust kind of settling about right at this level on the horses. So, uh, we'll definitely make sure we'll go to completion with our acrylic, uh, from at least this level down. I'll use my, I'll use my airbrush. We'll gently mist in some, some more of our, of our dirt and dust and uh, from that point on once I get the two horses completed like that then I can then go back into our center horse get him blocked in an acrylic and then I think at that point in time we're going to be ready to put away the acrylic palette bring out our oil palette and really start adding those final levels of detail and that's uh, where we're going to go from this point on. So I think what I'm going to do, we're going to use this little filbert brush here. This is a really good brush for dry brush blending. And, and that's kind of the technique you need to do with acrylic to get those nice soft transitions from your lights and your darks. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of do a dry brush technique and, and kind of gently brush on some of these highlights. Okay, so now I've drawn in my guidelines um, after it dried, and um, now I can kind of continue forward here, still in acrylic, of course, and just adding some subtle minor highlights. Switched over to my small round brush now, and actually this is a uh, small filbert brush, and it's really a good blending brush, and I, I like to use that. You do a lot of dry brush, blending when um, using acrylics because they do dry so quick and in these little filberts they are small soft uh, with that with their little round heads and so I can get some really good blending and softening uh, with this brush I'm I've gone and mixed now in ultramarine blue with some white and um, we're kind of getting a bit of a a uh, blue um, reflection here on the back of the of the horse. I'm kind of using that same color going into the uh, into the mane. I'm just adding some fine detail with my dagger brush or with my um, rigger brush here. A couple random stray hairs kind of sticking out. Kind of going into the face region now and again I'm using um, a little bit of ochre and a, and a little bit of sienna here uh, mixed with a, a small amount of white to kind of achieve some of these highlight colors and then just following the uh, the guidelines and some of the angles in the, in the uh, face region and again, not not an enormous amount of uh, of detail, but but just enough. And I'll certainly um, add further detail when we switch to our oil palette. 
but just slowly kind of building on this and uh, and slowly kind of bringing in some of these these um, subtle details. kind of working into the body region here and um, kind of added a little bit of a um, kind of a, a light pale purple color here that I've mixed with umber and, and doxazine purple and uh, lighten that up with a little white to make it opaque so trying to figure out you know the anatomy really of, of the horse and where the muscularity and separation is going to live throughout uh, throughout his body kind of get that established here and really use that uh, underpainting to to really use it to your advantage um, and that'll help quite a bit so you don't want to kill that underpainting the best you can really really use that negative space so I've come back and added a little bit of orange to that purple mixture and I'm kind of using that as a sort of a further highlight I've lightened that mixture quite a bit with titanium white and um, and now we can come back and, and add some of the stronger highlights here where uh, I feel that some of the uh, light will be most intense on the coat here on this horse. So I'm coming back here and just a, a slight glaze. I wanted to darken up those those highlights in the hair um, just slightly. So I, I just added a really light um, kind of umber glaze on top of that to darken it up a little bit more. You know, we're, right now we're still on the underpainting phase. Um, even though we're adding quite a bit of detail with our acrylic at this stage, um, we'll, we'll add much more detail with our oils, but right now we're certainly still just in the underpainting phase. And we can get a lot accomplished right now with our acrylics, and that'll just make the job that much easier when it comes to switching palettes.
All right, so we're gonna switch horses now. And we'll work on this little guy here off to the right. And he's gonna be our, our little um, kind of reddish orange colored horse here. So um, again, um, going back into that umber mixture that we, we mixed up here and just adding those, those subtle highlights to start with. Of course, I've already placed all of my uh, my outline here with my charcoal pencil back so that we can kind of have that guidance, see where, where we're going, where we're headed with this. And then just continuing to use that filbert brush uh, that, that uh, I think is such a handy tool here for, for this type of activity. And as you're as you're painting over these um, these guidelines, um, there may be a tendency that you don't necessarily cover the lines. You can always go back and erase them. They erase pretty easily, uh, in when you're using your charcoal, but they don't erase quite as easily when you move to oil. So it's good to get those erased before you switch to the oil palette. Kind of switched over here to more of an Indian yellow to um, kind of add some of that sheen to the coat and uh, and get some of those highlights to come in a little bit better. And then it's just kind of tweaking it and switching between your highlights and your shadows and making sure they blend well together. Are they dark enough? Do I have the right the right value? Um, is kind of what I'm looking for as I do this and so sometimes you just have to kind of play with it a little bit but certainly don't overwork it uh, you won't be happy with yourself if you do that going back to this to this dagger brush and here I can get some nice fine lines bring in some of the detail in the hair just kind of get that established really quickly. But you'll want you'll want some of that underpainting again to show through. That'll help to um, kind of show that separation of each uh, hair strand. And you're just coming back through here and kind of darkening up some of the deeper shadow regions here in the neckline and along the face. And I can add some subtle highlight here into his muzzle region here and he's got this nice uh, white patch on his coat here across his, the bridge of his face. Now I'm kind of adding a little bit more sienna and it's just kind of refining. So we're getting this, we're getting about 80, 85% completion with our horse and we can get over to the oils at that point. Okay, so I think we've gotten about as far as we want to get with these two uh, horses that are kind of further back uh, here on the sides. 
Um, so we've got about as far as we can get with, with our acrylic. And uh, what I want to do now, before I begin to work on this horse here, um, is I want to bring in um, some more acrylic airbrush. And I just want to create a soft um, sort of earth tone, uh, brownish color that I can spray at the base of each of these horses here in the back. Um, so I didn't put an enormous amount of detail here on the lower portion because a lot of that's going to get covered up. Uh, but I do want it, the uh, silhouette to show through. And so that's kind of the theory there. We get that painted in, um, then we'll acrylic our center horse here. And then from that point on, we're going to go ahead and switch our palette from acrylic to oil paints. And uh, we're going to finish uh, finish this painting off with our oils. So let's go ahead and get started with uh, uh, with applying the, the airbrush. So I'm going to hit this airbrush real quick and since I'm airbrushing in acrylic as well I wanted to certainly um, get that kind of put in here before we start moving forward as part of our background. We're able to add on in our airbrushing here at the base of our horses. Um, I've been often asked, um, can you do that without an airbrush? I don't own an airbrush. Um, what do you recommend? And you, you can. Um, it's really challenging to get that level of, of softness. Drop my, drop my brush here. Um, but you can achieve a similar effect. Um, you can take, and I would recommend taking a filbert brush like this one, um, and you can, you know, make sure it's fairly dry. It needs to be a little bit moist if you're going to do this with acrylic. And um, you're going to want to apply your, your paint. Now, in this case, I used brown and white, so I would mix uh, brown and white, predominantly more brown uh, than white, but white would help to certainly lighten it up and opaque it a little more. Um, and you can come through here and, again, not very wet because that would do nothing more than just streak it and cause lines. And so you want to have a, you don't even need a lot of paint on the brush, but kind of a fairly dry brush, and you do have dry brush technique where you would just roll it very soft and very gently like this. Obviously it's going to take a lot more time to do that. Um, you can do this with oil paint too. Um, the nice thing about oil over acrylic, obviously acrylic dries really quickly. Uh, oil has a tendency to slide a little better and blend a little better and you can work it. Um, a lot longer and um, this this can probably be achieved a little bit easier using the same technique but a little bit easier with oil and, and the same would apply I wouldn't have a whole lot on the brush um, you might even wipe some of your brush off and have it fairly dry and you would just go through and do a dry brushing of, of kind of a small rolling um, of your brush to get that so I just wanted to um, address that because I've had that question asked before um, if you don't own an airbrush. But um, again, I like the softness of the airbrush. And once again, I wanted to make sure that we got that kind of laid in. That to me is our background. Those horses are in the background. Uh, the, the horse here in the center, which is more in the foreground, is going to be more of the focal point of the painting. Um, and it's going to it's going to help to kind of it's going to help to set these horses back a little bit more as well, um, but to have all that dust kind of churning up, and um, so getting that kind of done real quickly I th was kind of important because we always want to work from the back to the front as we're working on paintings. So now we've got that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to block in our horse uh, also in acrylic and then we can switch over to our oil palette and really kind of complete this painting. So let's get uh, going on this next segment. All right, now we can move into our 
primary horse here in the foreground. And uh, of course he'll be a little bit closer from his partners. Um, this is going to be our, our um, white stallion. And so I've kind of mixed together a um, kind of a bluish gray here, added a little purple to it, but it's really uh, umber and ultramarine blue and doxazine purple. And I've lightened it up with some white and helped to opaque it. And um, get all this kind of painted in real quickly here in our acrylics. And then, of course, I can go back and re add in all those lines that I'm covering up here as our roadmap. But um, he's a dominant feature of the painting, so just taking great care to, to get my angles just as I want to see them here in the silhouette of this underpainting uh, block in phase. So, um, just want to take your time. And he'll definitely need another coat of paint. Um, some of that background started showing through, but I'll let it dry and then I can go back over it and that second coat should cover it all up pretty nicely. I find that uh, I don't really, I don't use heavy body acrylic. I use um, Golden Open acrylic, which is an out, really more of an outdoor uh, acrylic paint used for going on location. Um, but um, yeah, it's kind of a plain air uh, is the term, plain air acrylic paint. But um, it, it uh, does, it's a little bit smoother, um, so it does need a little bit more coverage. Or, or another coat, so it, it acts a little bit different than heavy bodies, but it uh, has a slower dry time. It gives me a little bit more time with it to blend. That's kind of why I like that. All right, so we got our horse painted in here now, and um, just adding a little bit more detail, a little bit more stones and shadowing kind of at the base there. Get that put in here real quick. And you'll see me later go through and I'll add a glaze on top of the um, of all that dust there in the background. I want to get that glaze put in before I start working the horse. Um, so I just use a um, mineral spirits and pure um, yellow ochre to achieve kind of that dust color. And I, and I just do a very thin film coverage of it. So I'll get to that here in a moment, but you're just kind of refining some of my foreground real quick here. And I'll do that glaze when I move here into my oil palette, which we'll be moving to here pretty quickly. I'm going to take a moment now and I'm going to explain my oil palette. Um, I've laid out my oils right here and uh, because of the fact that I underpainted much of the painting in acrylic, I don't need nearly as much oil paint laid out of my palette. So that's just one, that's just one thing to note. Um, but I'm using a Stay Wet palette here. I've got a, um, a sheet of, of uh, plastic or acrylic um, at the base of this. And I've added titanium white. This is ivory black, Van Dyke brown, French ultramarine blue, dioxazine purple, burnt umber, this is cad yellow, and this is cad orange. And one other color I'm going to add one other color I think I'm going to add here. I want to add some Indian yellow. So I just noticed I didn't have that on my palette. All right, so those are the 
colors I've got. Now I've got a few brushes. We're going to be working in small brushes here for some more fine detail. Um, got a filbert brush here, and it's just a small filbert, but uh, this will help me to kind of add to large, larger surface areas, and help me to um, just achieve some nice softness. Of course, I've got a rigger brush right here, and um, I've got two small five over zero brushes and uh, one will probably be used for my light colors and the other will be used for my dark so I'm not contaminating colors as I go through. And so that's just a really quick introduction to the oil palette I'll be using on our stampede of horses here. So let's get started. Alright, so I've taken some time to redraw on my guidelines now and we're kind of ready to go here and now that we've, uh, we're going back into our oils, um, you'll notice that I didn't add highlight in acrylic on my on my horse here in the foreground. Um, I want to do him all in oil on top of that that uh, acrylic underpainting. Um, I just feel like um, it'll help with making him a little bit more vibrant. So, but uh, before we start working on our on our forward horse, I'm um, going to go back here now and add further detail in, a, in a oil paints on our two distant horses here. So I'm just kind of improving um, on things. I'm adding further to the highlights and uh, kind of deepening and enriching uh, certain regions uh, with some more color. And of course, the great thing about oil paints is that I think you can achieve a more of a richness and vibrancy to um, to your subjects than you can really achieve with acrylic. Not that you couldn't achieve it; it just um, in order to achieve it, you'd need to add extra layers of of acrylic and, and really thick layers of acrylic, um, since they tend to dry darker than when you apply them, um, but but this is kind of a, the reason I, I really like to paint with both because I can still, I can kind of achieve the best of both worlds uh, using both media. And it's just a preference thing. This whole painting could be done all in oil or it could be all done in, in acrylic and and uh, you can certainly achieve very similar results with that. So up to you how you want to do that. I've just found that over time I kind of enjoy working with both and I think that they can play well together. So I'm kind of just slowly building here and uh, of course with oil you have much longer dry times so um, a lot more time to, to do some nice blending and uh, so I'm kind of just doing um, a bit of a wet on wet here and um, trying to get some good transitions and, um, and good blending time. I'm just going back here into the neckline and I'm just adding a little bit more of our shadow. And I'm really just applying this oil on kind of at the top region, mostly at the top region of the horse. Um, because as we move into some of that haziness at the bottom, which I've applied with the airbrush in acrylic paint, um, I don't want to lose that. I want to keep most of that, but if I apply my oils with just very, very little 
paint on the brush, I can still keep some of that softness. And that's what I'm thinking about. But really, I, I don't move too far down the horse with the oil. We're gonna really use most of that acrylic to show through. And I think that is the way that I can achieve the effect that I'm looking for. So now it's kind of going through and kind of improving on some lines and uh, making sure I'm getting the right, the right values where I want them. We can move here into our other horse and uh, just kind of the same thing we're, that we did on the first one is uh, come through now and we'll lighten up some regions and um, make them a little more vibrant. And then just working from the top down here. Um, and again, just like just like we did before, we're, we're gonna add most of the, um, the oils to the face and, and neck and the shoulders. And then moving downward, we'll rely more heavily on the acrylic underpainting and not add all that much detail with oil. We want to keep that illusion of that haziness um, from the dust in the road that's getting churned up. So um, I think that uh, we've accomplished that pretty well already. We'll deepen the shadows here. I've got an umber and a and uh, doxazine purple as my primary colors I'm using to kind of get that darkness. So we can add our brighter highlights now here and um, of course with oil, unlike acrylic, when you when you apply it, it that color just stays. It doesn't. It doesn't fade or darken at all. So um, that's one of the the great benefits to the oil, and one of the good reasons I like to add it is what do I what I apply will stay. kind of working on the little sheen in his coat now and I've kind of mixed this pale color here that to achieve that so uh, just kind of completing this horse and um, kind of adding more shadowing to the to his to his mane and um, and also to his tail region so so we're almost complete here uh, with our two background horses. And um, we'll be moving here pretty shortly to, to our main horse here in the foreground. But it's just kind of going through and tweaking and refining at this point in time and adding some additional color, additional shadowing. And, um, and just making sure I'm kind of achieving the effect that I'm looking for. 
it's really kind of the um, just the detail phase here with with our horses. got some some subtle glazes here I'm kind of using um, just with mineral spirits but just very subtle glazes that I'm kind of going over here and I'm kind of adding a little more color in certain regions but I'm keeping it soft I don't, I don't have a whole lot of paint on the brush to do this because I don't want to disrupt that acrylic underpainting with all that haze that we've created with our airbrush But just sort of coming through and kind of refining now and kind of adding these these little subtle glazes and and it helps me to kind of change up the values a little bit if I feel like my values are kind of off or the color might be a little bit off then glazing is um, is just a great tool to use to go back and refine specific regions specific colors to get the right colors and I find that I do that quite a bit and it, I, it usually comes at the uh, at the end. So that was just a good example right there of a glaze that I've gone through to use. Okay, so now we're moving into our main horse. So um, I've kind of mixed here together a kind of a grayish tone using white and uh, blue and umber. Um, to get this. Now I, I'm bringing it on and um, working, working the hair going into, into the face. Um, again, I kind of like to work from the top down. doesn't always pl uh, pan out that way, but, but in this case uh, it certainly does. So I'm following my guidelines here and trying to um, you know you'll want to use a lot of that underpainting as well to help you with the line and separation and in the anatomy going from the eye sockets and into the nose region um, so let it, let it work for you And this is definitely going to be an exercise of building on top of itself. So um, we're going to kind of do this what on what style. And then uh, I'll give it some time to dry. And then I'll go back through and I'll do some dry brush blending of some of the main highlights at the end, which you'll see me do here later. But right now I can kind of bring in the subtle highlights where I want to have them. And... Um, but it's going to be definitely uh, mostly done in grayscale. We'll keep a lot of the shadowing uh, throughout this underpainting portion of our horse here. So I've got a couple piles that I've pre-mixed with my oils um, of different values of gray going from light to dark using my pre my three primary colors and I've even added a little bit of midnight black into that too just to achieve some of the really dark uh, charcoal grays so just kind of pre-mixed a few piles here that I can bounce back and forth between I feel like painting on top of the acrylic already that kind of gets me a little bit further into it because I can still use that dark charcoal underpainting in acrylic and I can still allow it to to work for me um, in some areas where I don't have a lot of coverage or I have a very limited no amount of paint and I want some of it to show through it'll just come through really nicely and I think it it just makes the process quicker so
there's a, a lot of separation in the horse, specifically in the face region. There's a lot of the bone structure uh, in the face, and so it has several lines. And um, there's just a lot of striation in the horse anyway. Um, they're, they're lean creatures, they're muscular creatures, so they're pretty fun to paint. Um, and so, but having so many different subtle shadows because of the, the muscularity, um, you know, you, you'll be adding a lot of those subtle uh, transitions in the muscularity from light to dark. See that I've I started adding a little bit of blue. Um, I have a I have a cerulean blue on my palette that um, I'm kind of dipping into, and and that'll be a little bit of subtle highlight, kind of a kind of a reflective light. Really is is what it what it is, and so I think it it adds well with the white coat and of course nothing is is pure white really um, at the very end i will use pure white in in um, very reserved quantities in certain areas that i'll demonstrate here a little bit later but um but it and you know when it comes to to art um you're never really using a pure white so much you're always blending it with something uh, you're blending it with a, a yellow or an orange um, or a blue or a brown tone of some sort and it'll always be a little bit muddied and that's what you kind of want to keep in mind if you start using pure white uh, in large areas you're not going to be happy with the results so um, you really want to use your your white sparingly and use it as just kind of a final highlight to get some of the um, richest and, and brightest regions. Uh, and you'll be much happier that way with that. So there's, there's a lot of muscularity here on the front of, of the horse, uh, here in his chest region, leading into his legs. And um, so right now I'm just kind of queuing, queuing this up and, um, and preparing, preparing it for when I bring in some of the, the highlights that'll really cause the good separation to happen here. So I'm just kind of blending, um, kind of softening, and um, I went back and kind of recovered that because I thought, you know, that I could get some better, some better blending by doing a wet on wet here, and so I've kind of covered it and then kind of redoing it again because I wanted to get a little bit more softness achieved. So I don't have a lot of paint on the brush, and now I can just kind of work it and um, and get those transitions. I didn't use a lot of brushes for for this entire painting, really. Um, really just a couple brushes between the filbert uh, a couple small brushes and uh, my my rigor brush um, to achieve most of what I've done in this painting so not not an enormous amount of brushes were used
So this is where I'm kind of glazing now. I, before I go into this, the leg region, I wanted to add this subtle glaze with my um, yellow ochre because I wanted to get a little bit more good dust color. So there's a very, very little amount of paint on the brush. And it's really just using mineral spirits and, uh, and creating a, a small film, really. It's just a thin film that I'm putting over this. So that uh, it's very transparent and uh, a lot of the background can then kind of show through. And now that we got that painted, then we can now move into the leg region. I think horses are fun to do. I've done a few horses over time and um, they're fascinating subjects and they're a challenge. They're definitely a, a fun challenge um, to try. And if you've not tried painting horses, um, give, it, give it a try. I think uh, it helps you to um, slow down a lot. There's an enormous amount of detail that goes into them and um, people like them so you know horses if, if you're out wanting to sell your work um, horses tend to sell uh, pretty well but uh, they're just fun subjects to to paint and um, and they're also a, a good challenge so they'll, they'll help you to become a better artist as you try to perfect and hone your craft This little hoof here that's coming from the back leg, kind of tucked there behind, and um, get that blocked in here real quickly as well. So now we've got a little bit of highlight that's casting on the back of the of our horse here, so that'll be a little bit more in more white tone and a little brighter in that region. So I switched to my rigger brush and um, with that gray mixture I'm going to start adding some of the hair strands and um, this will be of course blowing in the in the wind. Now in some of this section here I'm using just a, a little bit of pure white because uh, I really want to have some of the sun really hitting certain portions of that mane. So this is one of those rare instances where I start to use kind of a pure white color, but I'm using it in really reserved quantities so that it's not going to be overkill. So we kind of kind of move into this um, belly region here and adding a little bit more color that um, just kind of trying to make a nice subtle transition from white to kind of that that uh, bluish shadow 
down into uh, the darker shadows of his of his stomach and um, kind of get that a little bit softened. What I'm going to do here pretty soon though after I get this back leg put in is I'm going to let this dry a little bit and then I'm going to come back with um, a gray glaze and I'm going to cover this really thin glaze all over the horse and I'm going to kind of reintroduce dark kind of some dark value back into the horse um, that way uh, I can go back later and really add in my dry brush um, highlights which I think will really help to achieve that softness and I also wanted to kind of tone down the colors that I've already added. I wanted to bring that glaze in and kind of tone things down and, and kind of darken the value. That way it can really establish the shadows. I'm kind of working this ear right now. I had almost forgotten I had this little ear here. And, and I realized later I needed to finish working that ear. So we'll bring all that in and, uh, and then I can bring in my glaze. So this is kind of the glaze I'm talking about. So I'm coming back. Don't have a lot of paint on the brush. I'm using mineral spirits only to bring in this glaze. So everything's kind of getting dark and it's getting softened. And I, I like I like this. I I feel like um, I do it pretty pretty frequently when I'm painting an oil. I even do it when I paint an acrylic. I, I like to create little glazes with the with the water. Okay, so that glaze has been added, and now I can kind of come through again, and I can start to reestablish. Um, some of the subtle transitions and highlights and um, what I'm doing now is I'm using my my small dagger brush and I'm starting to just come in with a um, it's just really more of a of a white with just a little bit of cadmium yellow and that is kind of the two colors I'm using to start to bring in highlights and we're really going to kind of focus on a lot of the highlights now. Now as I do this and I'll cover our horse with this uh, pale this pale yellow white color that I've mixed um, I'll let that get applied and then um, at the very end I'll start to introduce pure titanium white as kind of a finisher for this. And this is really just being dry brushed on right now. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush and I'm really just trying to just kind of dust this on and really blend it. And then as I move into kind of that shadow region there, um, it's really just more the same thing. I'm just kind of changing the values. In this instance, I've changed the color, brought in a little bit more blue in some of those areas. And it's noteworthy to mention that I'm using Alkid oil paint, and Alkid oils dry a lot quicker than traditional oils, so I can let um, I can let a day go by and it'll be dry enough that I can go back on top of this and do this dry brush blend technique much more effectively. And that's kind of what I've done here after I added our glazes was to let it just dry for about a day. If you do this with traditional oil, um, you'll have to let several days go by before you're going to be able to do this particular technique. So just something to keep in mind. I've just started using these alkids here not all that long ago and I'm, I really enjoy them. 
and uh, they're kind of a little bit newer introduced to um, the art world and uh, I find that I like them they're very nice um, they're kind of a happy middle ground between acrylics and traditional oils they kind of in my opinion they kind of have the best of both worlds So now I'm kind of starting to come through here and I'm kind of bringing in some more of that kind of the pure white we talked about bringing it in in just subtle quantities and and I'm using it mostly for kind of my my highest lightest um, highlights I guess is what I'm trying to say so um, trying to get this established here and and, um, and making it really nice and soft and again all this is just being dry brushed on at this stage now I'm kind of starting to reach that refining mode where I can go back and kind of step back from the painting I can look at where I can improve certain things soften certain things and um, kind of square things up as well and so since our light source is coming from the left now I'm again using that pure white and kind of creating some silver lining a little bit in these leg regions You notice I'm not killing that underpainting. Um, let it work for you. And as, and as you're using your your pure white here, skip around and, and let some of the negative space come through and, and that'll help to create some more subtle transition, subtle shadowing, and a little more separation uh, within some of these regions. So I'm going back into the face now and I'm using pure white. And you can see how it really just helps to cause this to pop, I think. So now we're getting some really good sun, sunlight, sunlit glow, I suppose, um, here within his face. Creates a little more expressiveness and creates a little more interest. So reserve the pure white for the very end. I think is is the best advice and use it use it sparingly and you'll be you'll be much happier with the results doing it that way some artists will tell you never to use pure white and uh, I think depending on the depending on what you're trying to achieve and depending on the theme of the painting that's probably true in some respects but I don't agree with it completely I I still use it I just use it sparingly so our little horse has a little bit of speckles here I'm, that's what I'm trying to add is just a little bit of some speckles in his legs and some little speckles in his in his back So we've reached that final refining mode and we're just going through now and kind of adding the 
final highlights here and some of the final detail and uh, we can call our little horse complete. get this signed now and uh, I want to thank you for watching the video I certainly hope that was helpful uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, I appreciate your comments as well and if there's something you'd like to see please let me know and um, I'd be happy to try to create future tutorial videos based upon those recommendations Well, I think we can call this painting complete. So that was uh, a lot of fun and hope it was something that was helpful to you. I ask you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll look forward to uh, presenting a brand new Mark Harwell Art painting tutorial real soon. Thanks for tuning in.